Hello everyone, welcome to another video. As we have already completed sessions on JVM architecture and heap memory, today we will discuss in detail regarding stack space. So we will see what is stack, uh, what all operations uh, we can do on stack, and then we will demonstrate it using example in Eclipse IDE. So please do check out the playlist from top right corner of your screen. Without any further delay, let's start. So what is a stack space? So it is similar to the heap space that we have in Java. Stack space is last in first out. That means whatever element that we are adding in the end that can be retrieved uh, at first. So whatever component was uh, added at the first place in the stack that can be retrieved in the end only. So stack is a data structure and it is of linear type data structure what is linear data structure is data is arranged in a linear sequence it can be traversed in a single run and all the elements of that data structures are stored in a contiguous location that is they are stored in uh, they are stored together in the memory so what operations we can do on stack there are mainly three operations we can do on the stack data structure first one is push to insert the items into stack from top so push operation can be used pop is to just delete the item from top so whatever item is available on the top that can be removed and one is top so that only represents the top element of the stack which can be popped or accessed now let's uh, take an example in our java program suppose we have one main method and uh, we have three more functions uh, to which main method is calling so first main method is there so when program starts uh, the main method will be added to the stack and one thing to be noted here like uh, all the threads in java they will have their own uh, jvm stacks provided by the jvm itself so unlike the heap memory uh, the stack will not be shared each and every thread will have their own uh, stack space so when the program starts as execution the main will be added first on the stack and uh, suppose main method is having a call to function one and that function one internally have a call to function two so similar to this stack will start getting filled up so first main will be there then a call to function one then function one will be added on stack or allocated memory to the stack and after that function two will also be allocated memory to the stack and suppose we have one more function function three which is being called through uh, function two itself so it's just calling function within the function so uh, suppose we have the function 3 which is the last function and do some processing so once its processing is done is complete then the deallocation will start so how the deallocation will start as we have seen what all operations uh, can be applied to stack those can be from top only so at the top currently function 3 is there so once execution of function 3 is done it will be removed from the stack and uh, the top will uh, now point to function 2 and once function 2 processing is also done similarly function 1 will be on the top and in the end we will have a uh, main function uh, available in the stack and once the program execution is completed then this stack space will be emptied now we have already seen uh, diagrammatically how the stack will look like but let's see that uh, in action as well so this is my class uh, where i will be demoing the stack memory in java stack memory is mainly used to uh, store the thread related data that contains uh, primitive data types like int, int double char those kind of primitive data types and their values and for the objects which uh, are allocated memory in the heap their references are also getting stored in stack memory so suppose this is my main method then i have three more method function one two and three in the function 3 i am just printing hello there in the console now let's call function 2 from function 1 and function 3 from function 2 so as these all functions are static so these functions can call each other and in the main method i will be only calling function 1 so now what i'm expecting is in the stack first main will be added and on top of that function 1 will be added and on top of that function 2 and in the end we will have function 3 and once the execution of function 3 is completed the stack should start removing from the reverse like function 3 will be removed at first then function 2 and then function 1 and in the end when program is exiting then main will also be removed 
So to see that, let me apply uh, breakpoints in all the functions. Now let's execute this program in debug mode. So here you can see in the debug tab it, here itself, let me expand it a little bit. So now main is there in the stack. So this is thread main. So this is the stack for uh, main thread. So if I move one step forward, it has called function one. So here you can see main is still there and function one is added on top of that. So when it is calling function two, so we are expecting function two will be added on top of it. So here you can see function two is added. Similarly, if I go one step more forward, function three will be added. So these are the push operations on stack which are happening as we are uh, calling the other functions without completion of the previous function. So now function three will be completed and uh, as expected, so the removal from the stack should start from the top. That is function three will be removed first, then function two, then function one. And in the end, we will have only main remaining in the program. And once the main is also execute, uh, executed uh, uh, statements, then it should also remove uh, the main thread will be actually disconnected. Now let's move forward. So I'm expecting function three should be removed. So function three method is completed now and you can see function three is removed. Now function two is removed and if I move forward again, function one is also removed. Now only main is left because main execution is in progress. So as soon as I do this, it will be disconnected and the stack will be uh, completely free. So stack is also a very important part of memory management in Java, uh, just like heap memory. Like heap memory is mainly used to store the object, but the references and all these method calls and primitive data types, those are getting stored in stack. So if uh, the stack memory is also full, that will also result into an error. Just like out of memory error, you will have stack overflow error. And now let's see uh, how it is storing uh, the primitive data types as well. So I'm just having int num is equal to 10 in function 3. And let me have one more int num1 is equal to 20 in function 2. Okay. Now let's try to execute this program and see how the variable, how we can access the variable, how we can uh, see the values of these variable. Let's debug it. Now currently it's in main and on this side you can see there is a variable tab. So currently only args is there. So that is the main uh, param parameter of this method which does not have any value. So if I move forward, so currently it is in function 1. So function 1 does not have any variable. Let's move forward. So now it's in function 2 and line number 11. So here you can see on the variable side we have one variable num1 with value 20. So as soon as I move forward this num1 will be out of scope and num will be there for uh, function 3 uh, stack value. If I click on this, I will be able to access num1 also. Okay, so this is how the uh, stack is used to store the primitive data type values as well. As we have already covered heap and stack memory, both the topics. Now let's see a few of the major differences that we have. First one is Java heap space is used throughout the application, but stack is only used for method or methods which are currently running. So whatever threads are currently running, stack will be used only for those. But heap memory is a memory which will stay there until the application is brought down. Heap space contains all the objects that are getting created in the application, but stack will contain only the references of those objects and primitive data types. The objects which are stored in heap can be accessed throughout the application, but all the primitive local variables that are getting stored in stack uh, can only be accessed within those methods. So it's like their local variables, uh, the methods local variable, those are getting stored in stack and they are accessible uh, only uh, until the scope of that specific method. As far as memory allocation is concerned, heap space is accessed through a young generation and old generation system, but a stack is accessed through last in first out as we have already seen in the beginning of the video. So it's a LIFO data structure and memory is allocated and deallocated in the same manner.
heap space has the life cycle of same as application so until the application is there in the memory the heap will also be available but stack is little different so that is thread specific only so as soon as the thread execution is complete the stack space will uh, no longer exist uh, as far as size is concerned heap will be uh, on the larger side but stack will be uh, not that much larger as compared to heap and uh, due to this itself uh, stack will be uh, much faster than the heap memory and that's it for this video so if you like the video please do like share and subscribe and if you have any suggestions or any other topic that you want me to cover please do comment thanks for watching